friends, Romans, countrymen, <laughs> lend me your ears. So I had to do that to one of them. Okay, um, my dear friends, today the Ave Maria University class of 2009 celebrates the culmination of four years of intellectual struggle as we receive our baccalaureate degrees. As our university honors us, I am privileged to speak on behalf of our class in thanking the people whose assistance has been essential to our success. Some of these names are obvious. Our professors, who have opened their hearts as well as their minds to us, and who have shaped us profoundly as human beings. Mr. Monaghan, without whose generosity our beloved university would not exist, and the other administrators and staff who keep the school running day to day, our parents and families, for helping us get here, stay here, and maintain most of our sanity in the process. <laughs> I thought about thanking the late Polish king, Jan Sobieski, whose victory over the Ottoman Turks at the Battle of Vienna in 1683 was instrumental in the introduction of coffee into Western civilization. <laughs> I'm sure he never suspected that his military conquest would play a crucial role in the work of a class of 58 liberal arts students more than 300 years later. But all of these names flew from my mind the other day as I was reading my Bible. I came across this verse from the story of King Herod in Acts chapter 2, verse 23. Quote, Immediately, an angel of the Lord smote him because he did not give God the glory, and he was eaten by worms and died. <laughs> In that spirit, um, I think I speak for our whole class when I say that the honor of this day truly does belong to Almighty God. In gratitude, we acknowledge that his grace and mercy have brought us to this moment, and without him we can do nothing. Nor can we forget the powerful intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, mediatrix of all graces, patroness of our university, and the beloved mother of our hearts. In the festivities of this weekend, and in every day of our lives, may we humbly remember that our accomplishments are entirely contingent upon the work of God. But what is exactly that we have accomplished? We've learned how to read philosophy, theology, literature, history, sometimes hundreds of pages at a stretch. We've learned how to think, how to identify first principles, question unspoken presupposition, how to defend the truth. We've even learned how to think and read at the same time. Those of us who have had classes with Dr. Sean Segrew have learned how to speak in front of large groups of people, whether we liked it or not. Some of us who are privileged to study with Dr. Reardon may even have learned how to draw a perfect circle on a chalkboard without moving our upper arm. <laughs> we have learned, sometimes through seemingly endless trial and error, how to balance the responsibilities of school and work with our spiritual and social lives. We've been fortified in our faith and deepened in our knowledge of God. In one finals week or another, we have developed the stamina to perform astounding feats of intellectual and physical endurance under several cubic tons of pressure while running on 18 and a half minutes of sleep. So our time in Ave Maria has been a time of profound intellectual and personal formation. It has also been, to a degree, a time of retreat. We have been taught by professors and surrounded by peers who are all united in their rejection of relativism and their dedication to seeking and living the truth. But now we stand on the brink, ready to be sent forth. No longer can we simply step back from the world. We must engage it. And just in case any of us have come through this last year without either reading the news or listening to a single one of Father Mutake's homilies, the world's in pretty bad shape. The truth is under attack in every arena of human life and association. And it's going to keep getting harder. But there's no room for despair, no time for paralysis. Instead, let us remember the words of St. Augustine. The times are bad, the times are troublesome. This is what humans say, but we are our times. Let us live well, and our times will be good. Such as we are, such are our times." End quote. And so, fellow members of the class of 2009, I challenge you to live good lives. Some of us will fight for the truth in a concrete way in our vocations, as priests are religious, as intellectuals in the professional world. But civilizations stand or fall because of the way men live their daily lives. So pursue virtue, both intellectual and moral. Don't surrender your mind. Keep reading and thinking and be ready to battle lies wherever you find them. Cultivate habits of moderation, justice, and fortitude. And most importantly, 
Develop real friendships. The life of virtue is not possible in isolation. We need one another's correction and encouragement to stand firm in the face of adversity. In the words of Henry Ward Beecher, it is one of the severest tests of friendship to tell your friend his faults, so to love a man that you cannot bear to see a stain upon him and to speak painful truth through loving words. This is friendship. This kind of friendship demands unremitting love and much humility, but in our culture, the only alternative is obliteration. To borrow a phrase from Benjamin Franklin, if we do not hang together, we will all hang separately. So work hard, live virtuously, love well, and in all things, enter into God's service with the whole of your being. The stakes are high. We cannot risk the consequences of divided hearts. So now we set forth. It has been an honor and a great blessing to live and learn with each of you over the past four years. I will let T.S. Eliot have the last word. This is from the Four Quartets. What we call the beginning is often the end, and to make an end is to make a beginning. The end is where we start from. With the drawing of this love and the voice of this calling, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all of our exploring be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. Quick now, here, now, always, a condition of complete simplicity, costing not less than everything, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Thank you.